first I'll start with the calendar a little bit, <laughs> explaining uh, keeping of time, uh, Hebrew way of keeping of time, <laughs> and then uh, just kind of go through the different places in Scripture that talks about the Feast of Trumpets. So in Bereshit, Genesis uh, says that, and Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it came to be so. And of course, this is on the fourth day. And uh, right here is explaining how Elohim created the sun, the moon, the stars for keeping time with. This is how we keep time. And uh, also the appointed times here, these are the festivals that are being talked about. It's how we know when to celebrate the festivals. And uh, in Hebrew, in the, in the, on like, the Hebrew calendar, the day begins at evening, not at midnight. <laughs> it, becomes, it begins at sunset. And so the sun helps us to know when each day begins. And the moon is what helps us to know when the month or month begins. And this and all calendars used to go by the cycle of the moon. But uh, later uh, they began to use mathematical calculations. The Hebrew calendar used to go by the sighting of the new moon. That's when the month begins, at the new moon. Uh, and uh, the modern Hebrew calendar today, uh, about 1,500 years ago or so, the rabbis actually changed the calendar to go by mathematical calculations instead of the sighting of the new moon. And they'll even admit today that their calendar is wrong. They aren't keeping the feast days on the correct days. And there was a man by the name of Nehemiah Gordon who uh, didn't want to follow along with the rabbinic laws and wanted to follow the calendar which Yahweh originally created, which it, and he explains in his Torah how to keep it. But it's so, the information was lost for so long. And there was a gap of time when nobody was really correctly keeping the calendar. And so he spent 10 years uh, working on this. And <laughs> um, the, the year begins when the barley is a beeb. And that's an agricultural term, that uh, a certain stage of ripeness that the barley is at. And uh, so he spent 10 years learning how to determine when the year begins, how to determine when the new moon has been sighted. And uh, that's the calendar that we're going by right now because he's actually gotten it fully restored and he and others are actually living by it in Israel today now. This is the reason why the sun and the moon were all created to keep time by. It's a very simple way to keep time. Anybody can do it. You don't have to be a mathematician to do it. <laughs> you, can, you don't even have to have a calendar or a piece of paper to keep it. All you have to do is look up in the sky and so anybody can do it very easily and simply. And uh, I'll just go now to where the first time that the Day of Trumpets actually takes place in Shemot, Exodus, uh, at 19.7. And Moshe, Moses, came and called for the elders of the people and set before them all these words which Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken we shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Moshe, See, I am coming to you in the thick cloud, so that the people hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So the people actually hear Yahweh speak to them. And Moshe reported the words of the people to Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go to the people and set them apart today and tomorrow, and they shall wash their garments, and shall be prepared by the third day. For on the third day, Yahweh shall come down upon Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. And you shall make a border for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain 
or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall certainly be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he shall certainly be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, let them come near the mountain. And Moshe came down from the mountain to the people and set the people apart, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be prepared by the third day. Do not come near a wife. And it came to be on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the ram's horn was very loud, and all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. So we're seeing that uh, the people are preparing by washing their clothes, getting them clean and white and spotless before the day happens. And then, when it, when the day comes, it's the ram's horn and the trumpet that is sounded, and it's so loud that the people are trembling from it. It's like huge, and of course, this is just on the mountain, the trumpet is sounding. Not necessarily anybody is actually sounding. And there's a thick cloud on the mountain, and there's thunders and lightnings that are coming out of the mountain, out of this cloud on top of Mount Sinai. So everybody trembling is trying to get up here to the edge of the mountain with all of this lightning and thunder, with all of this huge sound of the horn, the trumpet, the ram's horn. And Mount Sinai was in smoke, all of it, because Yahweh descended upon it in fire. And its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and all the mountain trembled exceedingly. So it's like there's an an earthquake going on here at the same time. And when the blast of the ram's horn sounded long and became louder and louder, Moshe spoke, and Elohim answered him by voice. God answered him by voice. And Yahweh came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And Yahweh called Moshe to the top of the mountain, and Moshe went up. So he was the only one who got to, he was the only one allowed to get to actually go up there on the mountain at that time. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through unto Yahweh to see, and many of them fall. And let the priests who come near Yahweh to set themselves apart too, lest Yahweh break out against them. And Moshe said to Yahweh, The people are not able to come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Make a border around the mountain and set it apart. And Yahweh said to him, Come, go down, and then come up, you and Aharon, Aaron, with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to Yahweh, lest he break out against them. And Moshe went down to the people and spoke to them. And then this is where um, Yahweh, Elohim, he spoke the Ten Commandments to them. He actually spoke it. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my faith. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookednesses of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh or Elohim to naught, for Yahweh does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. You do not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and it is all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. And so he's actually speaking all these things to the people, and the people were so afraid hearing his voice that they actually asked Moshe that they never hear it again because it was so frightful. (laughs) And they said that we'll listen to you, Moshe, to what you say as you bring the words of Yahweh to us, but we don't want to actually hear his voice. And then over here, and to Moshe he said, Come up to Yahweh, you and Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall bow yourselves from a distance. But Moshe shall draw near to Yahweh by himself, and let them not draw near, nor let the people go up with him. 
And Moshe came and related to the people all the words of Yahweh and all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh has spoken we shall do. And Moshe wrote down all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel and they offered burnt offerings and slaughtered peace slaughterings of bulls to Yahweh. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that Yahweh has spoken we shall do and obey. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has made with you concerning all these words. And Moshe went up, also Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and under his feet like a paved work of sapphire stone and like the heavens for brightness. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the chiefs of the children of Israel. And they saw Elohim, and they ate and drank. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, while I give you tablets of stone, and the Torah and the command which I have written to teach them. And Moshe arose with his assistant, Yehoshua, which is Joshua. And Moshe went up to the mountain of Elohim. And he said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Right here connected with the Feast of Trumpets. And he and the 70 elders, Moshe and the 70 elders, go up onto Mount Sinai into the cloud because Yahweh calls them, come up here. They dine with him on the throne room floor, sapphire blue stone, and they actually are there on the throne room floor with Yahweh, eating with him. And they saw him and did not die. And Moshe went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. And the esteem of Yahweh dwelt on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days, and on the seventh day he called to Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the esteem of Yahweh was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain before the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And it came to be that Moshe was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. So. He's gone up into the cloud. This is what the Day of Trumpets is about. Going up into the cloud here to meet with Yahweh on Mount Sinai. At the blow and the, it's at the blowing of the trumpets that we know that uh, the day has arrived. It's like the warning, the sound that goes out. Um, but of course, this all actually took place earlier during the third month of the Hebrew year. Now, later though, to remember this, Yahweh actually does a different day than during the days it actually took place. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing of trumpets, a set-apart gathering. You do no servile, servile work, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. So, on the first day of the seventh month. And um, nowadays, on the modern Hebrew calendar, the rabbis have changed it to the first month, and they've changed it into a New Year celebration. It has nothing to do with the New Year at all, though. <laughs> There's no New Year celebration going on. Uh, it's the seventh month of the year. And uh, so he actually changed which day to remember it on from the day it actually happened because uh, when it is fulfilled, of course, it's going to be fulfilled at a different time. Uh, I'll go to, this is from some of my own translation work of the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew, which recent uh, rediscovery. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, and it was thought that this manuscript was totally lost, that we would never know what it actually says. But we've recently, uh, scholars have rediscovered these manuscripts that have been copied through the generations. And this Hebrew manuscript of Matthew was thought to be a translation from the Greek. But at further study, they've actually found that it is a copy from the original Hebrew Matthew. And there's a lot on that, too, but I won't go into detail on all of it. But um, you, when Yeshua is speaking, about the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, 
he gives more insight on what to look forward to for his return. Again, Yeshua said to his top ones, his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and is seen in the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Adam, the Son of Man. Wherever the dead body is, there the eagle shall be gathered. And at that time, after the distress of those days, the sun shall grow dark, and the moon shall not give forth its light, and the stars shall fall from the heavens, and the hosts of the heavens shall be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Adam shall appear in the heavens, and all the families of the earth shall mourn, and shall see the Son of Adam on the clouds of the heavens with a great host and with dreadful appearance. And he shall send his messengers with a trumpet and with a great shout to gather his chosen from the four winds of the heavens, from one end of the heavens to the other. And so here Yeshua is talking about it. For any Jew during that day, they, would, they understood. Yeah. He was talking about the Feast of Trumpets because they did it every year and you can see here here's the lightning again like in the cloud it's going to be such a huge event when Yeshua returns that uh, it's going to be really obvious there's no mistaking it you'll be able to see the lightning through the thunder and uh, and he will come on the clouds which is obvious just like the clouds were on Mount Sinai. He's going to be coming on the clouds and with the lightning and the thunder. And he's going and it'll be at the trumpet sound. So on the first day of the seventh month, we don't know what year, of course, and this is a day that you can't calculate ahead of time. Because the new moon has to actually be seen. You can't know when this is going to happen. You can know the date of when it's going to happen, but you can't know the day. The exact day. Of that it's going to happen. And so when he comes, the trumpet will sound, and it's at the sound, the messengers, the angels, are going to sound the trumpet. And they will go across all the earth gathering the chosen ones, the people who are, have chosen to follow Elohim. And it's just like at the trumpet sound. And in Israel, we have from records understanding uh, during the first century how they kept the feast. Um, really the only thing that we're commanded to do for the feast is the blowing of the trumpet. There's really, and that it's, that you don't do any work. There's really nothing else that is like a command that you have to do on that day. Um, but during the first century, during Yeshua's day, uh, there had to be two witnesses and in the Torah, there have to be at least two or three witnesses before any kind of judgment can be made on anything. Two or three witnesses who are in agreement. And so there have to be at least two witnesses to the sighting of the new moon and so uh, before they would actually declare that the day of trumpets had begun. And so when there were two witnesses who had seen it, they would go to the Temple Mount and um, they would, and the high priest would be called, and he would say to them, "Come up here," and uh, they would give their account the, of sighting the new moon, and then the trumpet from the Temple Mount would be blown, signaling for everybody else, uh, and they would all. It was kind of like a chain reaction <laughs> from that trumpet being blown then the trumpets would be blown throughout the entire land of Israel. That this is the first day of the seventh month. Um, this is the day of trumpets. So when Yeshua comes at the trumpet sound, it'll be on the first day of the seventh month after the sighting of the new moon, and he's going to gather all of his people and bring them onto the cloud where they'll dine with him on his sapphire blue throne room floor. This is where the rapture comes in. Uh, Shaul, Paul, is the one uh, who really talks about the resurrection and the rapture the most. There really isn't uh, anywhere else that really talks about it quite like he does. And um, he says, Now, brothers, we do not wish you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you be sad as others who have no expectation. 
So he's talking about falling asleep here as those who have died. Uh, this is something uh, in the Hebrew culture, uh, you don't actually die. You go to sleep. Your spirit sleeps until the time of the resurrection. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, so also Elohim shall bring with him those who sleep in Yeshua. For this we say to you by the word of the Master, that we, the living who are left over at the coming of the Master, shall in no way go before those who are asleep. Because the Master himself shall come down from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of a chief messenger, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we, the living who are left over, shall be caught away together with them in the clouds to meet the Master in the air. And so we shall always be with the Master. So then encourage one another with these words. So again here we can see it's obvious that Shaul is talking about the day of trumpets here. At the sounding of the trumpet, that is when all of those who are here on the earth, the dead who are asleep, shall be raised. And of course this is not everybody is going to be raised at this time. Uh, from other things in Revelation, this is the resurrection of the righteous. The wicked aren't going to be raised at this time. Those who are, all those who then, who are asleep, shall be raised on this day at the sound of the trumpet and shall go be raptured into the air to meet Yeshua on the clouds, which is the clouds, same clouds like on Mount Sinai at the sound of the trumpet. And uh, then those who are still here, alive on the earth, they'll be changed, instantly changed, as Shavuot talks about in one of his other letters. This is First Thessalonians. They'll be instantly changed and with brand new bodies. You know, and those who are asleep will receive brand new bodies when they're raised. And they'll get to go right up into the clouds. And the messengers are going around all across the earth, gathering them, bringing them all to go up into the cloud for the day of trumpets when Yeshua returns. When you start seeing all these pieces put together, you can start seeing just what is taking place for the Day of Trumpets. And of course, uh, it will be an unexpected thing when this happens. Yeshua uh, will all of a sudden, you know, be coming. And all of a sudden, all the, the trumpets are going to sound, and everybody's going to hear them across the entire world. And, it's, and the heavens are going to be torn open like a curtain. And all of a sudden he's just going to come down and everybody is going to be trembling from the shaking and the sound of the trumpets. And he's going to bring all those of the righteous who have followed him, who uh, have given their lives to him, to meet him in the air. Now this is where all the pieces come together in Revelation. Nobody's going to miss it. That's how you can tell that, yeah. that it's the real Messiah, not a false one. In Revelation 11, we hear about two witnesses. Um, and right here, Yohanan, John, is being given revelation about the last days. Uh, and he's speaking, And a reed, reed like a measuring rod was given to me, and the messenger stood, saying, Rise and measure the, measure the dwelling place of Elohim and the altar and those worshiping in it, but cast out the court which is outside the dwelling place and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles and they shall trample the set-apart city underfoot for forty-two months. And I shall give unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days clad in sackcloth. And these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that are standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if anyone wishes to harm them, fire comes out from their mouth and consumes their enemies. And if anyone wishes to harm them, he has to be killed in that way. These possess authority to shut the heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, as they possess authority over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they wish. And when they have ended their witness, the beast coming up out of the pit of the deep shall fight against them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sedom, which is Sodom, and Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, where also our master was impaled. 
and some of the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations leave their dead bodies for three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be placed in the tombs. And those dwelling on the earth rejoice over them and exult, and they shall send gifts to each other because these two prophets tortured those dwelling on the earth. And after the three and a half days, a spirit of life from Elohim entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from the heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up into the heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. And in that hour there came to be a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. And in the earthquake seven thousand men were killed. And the rest became afraid and gave esteem to the Elohim of the heavens. And the second woe is past, and see the third woe is coming speedily. And the seventh messenger sounded, and there came to be a loud voices in the heavens, saying, The reign of this world has become the reign of our Master and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders sitting before Elohim on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, we give, thank, we give you thanks, O Yahweh El Shaddai, the one who is and who was and who is coming, because you have taken your great power and reigned. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead to be judged, and to give the reward to your servants, the prophets, and to the set-apart ones, and to those who fear your name, small and great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. And the dwelling place of Elohim was opened in the heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his dwelling place. And there came to be lightnings, and voices, and thunders, and an earthquake, and great hail. Again here we can see, at the seventh trumpet, there's seven seals, then seven trumpets, uh, and uh, there's seven bowls of the judgment and wrath of Elohim. From different places, and like in Daniel, and uh, putting Daniel... Uh, timing with Revelation, we can see that there's going to be seven years of tribulation. This is talking about the second three and a half year period. The two witnesses are witnessing and doing all of these things for three and a half years, exactly 1,260 days. And then at the end of that time, they're killed, and then three and a half days later are raised. And Yahweh calls them to come up here, just like he did to Moshe, to come up here into the cloud. And they're brought up into the cloud, and of course they give their witness as to the sighting of the new moon. Just like there have to be two witnesses that, that the new moon has been sighted, that this is the day of trumpets. Uh, and this, and, and this, at this time, this is when Yeshua will actually come. And so we can see that the rapture is taking place here at the seventh trumpet. At the end of the seven years of tribulation, Yahweh will sound, then this is the last trumpet, and it will sound. And everybody, of course, will hear the trumpet. And here we see the lightnings and the thunders and the earthquake again. Um, all these things, the same things happening here. And so the Day of Trumpets is a rehearsal that is rehearsed every year so that when the, uh, the fulfillment happens, just like Yeshua already fulfilled Passover, when the fulfillment happens, we'll be able to see what's happening. And he gave us the timing on these things so that we, we would be prepared because there's the preparation time that comes. They prepared for several days ahead of time before that, getting all of their garments white and clean, making sure that they're presentable to Yahweh. And so every seventh month of the year, that's when we prepare. Just before that time, we start preparing, even though we don't know for sure. When the actual event happens, you'll be ready <laughs> because you know the events uh, of what's going to take place. And, so, and also, you won't be taken off guard by any of it. You'll be ready. And of course, we see here in Revelation, And I heard as the voice of a great crowd, as the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahweh El Shaddai reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him praise, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife prepared herself. And to her it was given to be dressed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the set apart ones. And he said to me, Right, blessed are those who have been called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of Elohim. It's the righteousness 
the, is the cleanness of the garments, um, the obedience to Yahweh. The, everybody is being called the trumpet call. Now we understand that the trumpet call is the calling for the marriage supper, the marriage that takes place. And I won't go into detail about the festival of Sukkot, but Sukkot is, uh, or the festival of booths, is the um, remembrance of when the children of Israel dwelled in tents with Yahweh. They all dwelled in tents or booths together in the desert. And Sukkot lasts for a whole week, starting on the 15th day of the seventh month. And it's all, it's all really a shadow picture of a wedding. And all Jewish weddings throughout history, all weddings in Israel, have followed the festival of Sukkot as their format for the wedding. Like, they actually celebrate the wedding like they would celebrate Sukkot. Uh, with the covering of the tent, Yahweh is our covering, and he comes. And so the day of trumpets is the trumpet sound that he has come onto the earth. And those who have given their lives to him to follow him will go and meet with him in the air. And then in Revelation, it talks about the seven bowls of the wrath of Elohim that will be poured out on all those who are on the earth still who have hardened their hearts against Yahweh and refuse to obey him, refuse to have anything to do with him, to refuse to do what's good and right and do whatever wicked, evil thing comes to their heart and refuse to repent for it. And we can see a good picturing of that with David and Saul and Shaul. Even though they both sinned, they both did things that were wrong. David committed adultery and basically murdered a guy, but he was still a man after God's own heart because he repented of it and he didn't do it again. And he didn't continue in his wicked ways. Whereas Saul continuously tried to blame other people for the things that he did when he disobeyed Yahweh. He never repented of them. Uh, he lost the whole kingdom. But David gained the whole kingdom, and through his line, the Messiah came and was born because of his repentant heart. And so while all of the earth down below is receiving the judgment of Yahweh, those who are righteous are taken away and spared from the judgment and in, in the rapture, but it's at the end of the seven years. As we can see here in Daniel, we can see that uh, Daniel is worried about the salvation of the nation of Israel at this time. And um, there's a messenger, an angel, Gabriel, who is sent and says to him, Seventy weeks are decreed for your people and for your set-apart city to put an end to the transgression and to seal up sins and to cover crookednesses and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and profit and to anoint the most set apart. Know then and understand from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince is seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It shall be built again with streets and a trench but in times of affliction. And after the sixty-two weeks Messiah shall be cut off and have not and the people of a coming prince shall destroy the city and the set-apart place. And the end of it is with a flood, and wastes are decreed in fighting until the end. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week he shall put an end to slaughtering and meal offering, and on the wing of abominations he shall lay waste, even until the complete end, and that which is decreed is poured out on the one who lays waste. And so we can see from the 70 weeks, during this last week part here, each day is representing a year here. And we can see here that there's a seven-year period. This is the seven-year tribulation. I won't go into all the details of the other previous weeks because Yeshua already fulfilled all those with the festival of Passover. But, um, and it's in the middle of this week here that we see the abomination that lays waste is set up. And of course, this is at the same time as the two witnesses were witnessing for the three and a half years. And from Daniel, we can see that it's also three and a half years um, from the time that the abomination that is set up out on the set-apart place, this abomination that lays waste uh, at the end of that three and a half years. So uh, we can tell from whenever the abomination is set up. We don't know what, uh, what it looks like or what this thing is 
but you can know exactly from that time it's going to be three and a half years to when uh, the end comes, when uh, all of these events take place as we see over here in Revelation with the Day of Trumpets and when Yeshua returns. And so there's all these different clues that are given. So it's actually pretty simple. Yahweh always does everything very simply so that even a child can understand it. It's always very simple and easy. Anybody can understand it. We're in the days now that it's time to understand these things.